Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to take you through some of the key Azure and AWS services that are available in databases, app services and security areas. So let's go through databases first. In terms of databases, if you want to deploy a relational database on the cloud, then you can use AWS RDS, which stands for Relational Database Service. Using AWS RDS, you can deploy MySQL, Oracle and other databases. And also AWS has their own database called Aurora, which uh, I'm going to talk about it in the detailed lectures. In terms of Azure, you can use SQL to deploy SQL Server and you can also deploy MySQL and others. But predominantly, you will deploy SQL Server on Azure because it is a, it is a Microsoft product really. And secondly, if you want to deploy a NoSQL database on the cloud, then you can use AWS DynamoDB or Azure Cosmos DB. Using either one of them, you will be able to deploy NoSQL database on the cloud. And thirdly, using AWS Elastic Cache and Azure Cache, you will be able to set up, manage and scale a distributed in-memory cache environment in the cloud. And if you want to deploy data warehouse on the cloud, then you can use AWS Redshift and when it comes to Azure, you can use SQL Data Warehouse. Again, I'm going to discuss about them in the database section of the course in a bit more detail. And in terms of migrating the data from your on-premise data center into the cloud, AWS provides a data migration service using which you can migrate the data. And in terms of Azure, Azure has Data Factory. Data Factory is not as such a data migration service, but um, using Data Factory, you can move the data from one place to another and transform the data. It's more like an ETL tool on the cloud. However, you can use it to migrate the data from your on-premise data center to the cloud. But Microsoft coming up with a dedicated data migration service, which is currently in preview. Very soon it will be released for everybody. Until then, you might need to use Data Factory or any other approach. And when it comes to app services, AWS has Elastic Beanstack and Azure has app services where you can deploy web apps and API apps. In terms of comparison, I find app services much more sophisticated when compared to Elastic Beanstack. In terms of mobile related services, using Mobile Hub, you will be able to deploy mobile backend services on AWS. Whereas with Azure, you will be using mobile app to create mobile backend services on Azure. And in terms of comparison, AWS has much more services in mobile area compared to Azure. But Microsoft started catching up in this. They have these services such as Intune like that. But um, those are not available on the cloud as a, as a cloud service. But AWS has device management and all those stuff as a cloud service within AWS. And when it comes to exposing APIs to the outside world, you can able to expose the APIs through the cloud to the outside world using AWS API Gateway or Azure API Management. Using any one of them, you will be able to expose the APIs in a secure manner and you can able to control the throughput, manage them, etc. And the fourth one is step functions and logic apps. Using any one of them, you will be able to develop system workflows. For example, when customer placed an order, you want to do series of steps in the background. For example, sending an email to the customer, sending an email to the supplier and processing the payment and all those stuff, you can put them as a series of steps, either using step functions or logic apps and execute them in a proper order. And finally, in terms of streaming service, if you want to develop a website, something like YouTube, then you can use Elastic Transcoder when it comes to AWS and in Azure, you can use Azure Media Services. So these are the five key AWS and Azure app services in the cloud. There are other key ones also, but I thought you will get benefited if I discuss these five services in AWS and Azure. And finally, security. When it comes to the cloud, security is a very, very key important aspect. I didn't mean that security is not important in your on-premise data center. Security is important everywhere, but um, when it comes to the cloud, it is much more important because everything sits on internet. So in terms of identity and access management, i.e. creating the users, creating the groups and controlling the access to those resources, to the users, all these things you can do using AWS IAM. 
which is identity and access management and also you can use Azure Active Directory when it comes to Azure. And secondly, most of the cloud providers provide one useful thing, which is basically they will keep on monitoring your resources from security perspective. And if you haven't followed best practices, then they will raise alerts to you. Basically, they will look for vulnerabilities and any settings that will make your resources vulnerable to the outside world. They will identify and um, they will provide that feedback to you. In order to provide that feedback in AWS, AWS provides a service called Inspector, which provides that feedback to you. And when it comes to Azure, Azure uses Security Center service in order to provide that feedback. And once you got the feedback in terms of alerts and everything, you can view that feedback and they also provide some recommended actions which you can take in order to secure your resources either in AWS or Azure. And if you want to secure your web application that is hosted on the cloud against a common attacks like a SQL injection, XSS attacks, then you can use web application firewall in AWS and you can use application gateway in Azure. Basically application gateway comes with a web application firewall component which you can switch on in Azure. However, web application gateway has a lot more functionality in terms of uh, layer seven load balancing and all those stuff but it has an added component web application firewall, which you can switch on when it comes to Azure. And the fourth one is organizations uh, in AWS and subscription in Azure. Both of them you can use to organize your resources from billing perspective also, and from access control perspective also. So there are a lot of functionality in terms of access management, in terms of giving the structure to your resources, and in terms of cost management and everything which I'm going to discuss in detail in the security section of the course. And finally, if you want to secure your credentials, i.e. some key information that is used to access your cloud services or the services that are sitting in on-premise, then you can use Cloud HSM to store those credential information such as keys. And when it comes to Azure, you can use Key Vault. So that's it for the overview. If you have some time, please join me in the next lecture. See you in the next lecture.